Okay, uh, let's get into this. We're looking at a, a pretty major strategic hazard report here. It covers Europe, Western Russia, basically the next 10 days or so, starting November 8th. Mm. And the core thing I think you need to grasp is this uh, exceptionally intense dipole weather pattern driving everything. Yeah, exactly. It helps if you sort of picture the atmosphere like a, well, a giant unstable seesaw, right? You've got yeah. this deep trough, low pressure over the Atlantic causing problems. And then on the other side, a big blocking ridge, high pressure just sitting over the east. And this whole setup, it's basically acting like a storm factory, driving three distinct hazard zones one after another. It's a storm factory. Wow. And you mentioned something amplifying it. Marine heat waves. That sounds serious. Oh, it is. It's really uh, supercharging the whole destructive potential. We're seeing sea surface temperatures, SSTs, in both the North Atlantic and the Mediterranean that are way above normal. Think like $1.5 SERTA to maybe even $3 warmer than usual. And that extra warmth, it acts like a power surge. It's just injecting massive amounts of moisture and energy straight into this already potent weather system. Okay, so that really sets the stage. Let's talk about the first hit. The water hazards in Western Europe starting around November 8th. The report mentions an atmospheric river kicking off with a bomb cyclone. That sounds dramatic. It is. A bomb cyclone just means it intensifies really, really rapidly. But the key impact here, especially for you know infrastructure and communities, it's widespread fluvial flooding. River flooding, not just puddles on the street. Precisely, because you've got these multiple waves of heavy rain hitting places like the UK, Ireland, Western France, one after the other. The ground gets completely saturated. So when you see forecasts of say $100 or more rainfall, that water has nowhere to go but straight into the rivers. Major flood risk. Right, and then almost immediately, the focus shifts south to the Mediterranean by the 10th. The description of the hazards there is well, it's intense. Uh-huh. This is where that really warm Mediterranean water comes into play. It fuels explosive atmospheric instability. We call it high Kate convective available potential energy. KPE. That's like uh, thunderstorm fuel. Basically, yeah. yeah. Vertical fuel for really violent updrafts. So what that means on the ground is intense supercell thunderstorms, very sudden flash floods, and worryingly, and um, anomalous risk of exceptionally large hail, like really destructive stuff, and even tornadoes, especially along the Italian coasts. We're seeing this kind of thing later in the year now, it seems. Goodness, and compounding that, you have the Alps facing this rain on snow risk. Yeah, that's a nasty combination. Warm rain hitting the existing high altitude snowpack, that triggers rapid snow melt. So you get worse flash floods down in the valleys and a higher avalanche risk up high, all happening at work. Okay, so that's the west and south dealing with water. Let's flip to the other side of that seesaw you mentioned, yeah. the east. Western Russia, Moscow specifically, is actually warm during this yeah. until the 15th or so. That's right. While the west is, well, drowning, Moscow's sitting in the warm part of this pattern, experiencing really profound warmth for November. I mean, just a few days ago, November 4th, Moscow had its warmest November night ever recorded. Eight dollars two techs. That's almost ten dollars above normal for this time of year. That's incredible. Yeah. How can the same system cause flooding and a heat wave? And then what happens? Because the report talks about whiplash. Well, that extreme warmth, it's actually uh, kind of a necessary ingredient for what comes next. Around November 16th, 17th, that big Atlantic trough finally swings eastward. It shoves that warm air out and pulls down a significantly colder air mass from the Arctic and Siberia. Oh, so you get a massive temperature clash. A huge clash. We're talking temperatures potentially dropping, you know, over 20, maybe 30 degrees Fahrenheit in just 48 hours. And that rapid drop slams right into all the leftover moisture from the warm period. Creating a massive thermal gradient, the perfect fuel for a big storm. Exactly, rapid cyclogenesis. The high impact scenario we need to be ready for is a major, possibly unexpected winter storm or blizzard for the Moscow region. Models are hinting at um, maybe 10 to 20 inches of heavy wet snow combined with winds around 18 mile per hour a real shock to the system after the warmth. A true weather whiplash. Mm -hmm. But not everywhere in the east, right? No. And that shows the scale of this pattern. While Moscow braces for snow, you look further south, like the Caucasus region, Georgia, Azerbaijan. They stay stable, quite pleasant actually, unseasonably mild, with highs maybe around 71, 20, 74 town decks. Huge contrast. Okay, so connecting these dots, mm -hmm. there's a clear climate change signal woven through this whole forecast, isn't there? Absolutely. It comes back to basic physics, the Clausius-Clapeyron relationship. Essentially, warmer air holds more moisture. 
about 7% more for every $1 warming, so those warmer sea surface temperatures, they directly fuel heavier rainfall in Western Europe and more intense storms in the Med. It's a direct link. In the Moscow situation, the warmth followed by extreme cold and snow. It might seem contradictory, but it's not. That initial extreme warmth is what provides the energy, the moisture for the powerful cold storm that follows. It's a demonstration of an increasingly um, erratic and volatile global water cycle, more extremes at both ends. Right, so the final thought then. This report specifically flags preparing for that potential 10, 20 inch snowstorm in Moscow, even with model uncertainty, high impact, maybe lower certainty. How does that kind of forecast change how, say, city services, energy transport need to think about planning, especially for these sudden high impact events? Something for you to ponder. 